Well, Stefan, um, four years almost to the day since you uh, first signed for Adelaide United. How does it feel to walk back into High Marsh Stadium as a Reds player again? Yeah, uh, much better to be walking in as a Reds player than the opposition. Um, yeah, like you said, four years. Four years ago, I joined the club, and uh, obviously we, we had a really good period and won the championship. And um, when I got uh, approached and spoke to Bruce, and I know the direction of the club is it's going in a really good way. I was excited to, to join the club again. Things haven't gone as planned since you left Adelaide. Oh, no, probably not. Um, I think yeah, I probably had a couple of tough years and. That's football, you have your ups and downs, and um, I think that's why at this point in my career it's really important to play and, and be part of a team that's um, playing a, a really exciting style of football and being a, a viewer, um, especially over the last couple of weeks, really watching Adelaide, and I think, you know, they score goals, and, and that's important, and it's exciting, and that's something I wanted to be a part of, and, and hopefully for the rest of the season and the next two seasons to come. What was the decision behind leaving Brisbane? Was it something you didn't mind up there? Or? Oh. Yeah, there's a, a range of things. There's nothing really too bad about Brisbane. I think it was a great city. Um, the club's a good club, but it was just um, probably a bit of personal preference um, in the way they were playing. Didn't suit me as much. Um, and speaking to the coach there, he said if you're if you're wanting to leave, um, and then once I found out Adelaide were interested, then for me it just seemed like the the right decision to make. And we'll wait and see what happens. All things going well. When do you think you can play your first game? Uh, hopefully next week against Brisbane, up in Brisbane, so <laughs> pretty funny, obviously the, the first game will be against them and playing against my, my old teams always seems to work out work out well, or not so well last time I was here in Adelaide, um, but yeah, it'll be exciting to play against them. That's it for signings, uh, Bruce? So the January window, yeah, that, that, that'll be all. With a, with a club that's a bit thin for numbers, with injuries piling up, is it frustrating that your Chinese import hasn't come up to scratch? Yeah, for me it's frustrating. Um, maybe a question better for Ho Chan. He's got to pick the, the, the squad every every week. But look, I think getting Stefan in helps with that depth. I think we also got to be careful in the January window to just sign a player who will be good for six months, say, you know, because then when you do get your injured players back and you do have a full squad, do you have a player who's there for the longer term? I think we've got that in Stefan, but in order to find those sort of players in January, without transfers and all the rest within the Australian domestic market, it becomes very difficult. Bruce, can we, can we expect any uh, any more departures during the window? No, so, no more. So James Teresi is uh, going to remain? Yeah, look, um, there was a bit of speculation about him. Like I said uh, in previous interviews, there's going to be speculation about a lot of our decent players, there's, you know, I don't know why he got talked about more than maybe some others, um, but he did. But as I always said, and it's the truth, didn't get one call, didn't get any approach, nothing official, nothing unofficial. So for me, he was always staying. And just on uh, Stefan, he's obviously a former teammate of yours. You've got to see from the other side. Well, as a as a teammate of his, what did he bring in 2016 to that title? When it looked like outside of looking at it, he brought a real spark. But as a teammate, what, what did he bring to the club? Uh, for he added so much balance to our team. He was the missing piece, if you like, uh, during that year. Um, hopefully, he's the missing piece for for this season as well. But you know, he brings energy, he brings quality. Um, he's an attacking threat. Works extremely hard. He can get up, he can attack, he can get back and defend. Um, he, in the end, for me, it's about bringing better quality every time you make a signing. Um, and honestly, I think our midfield now is the best in the league. I know I did ask you about your Chinese recruit. You said it was the Gojang, but this is a guy that didn't even play in the youth team. Is it frustrating that that decision wasn't solely yours? Yeah, but look, but all <laughs> everyone's got someone to answer to. Right, so I can't unilaterally go and sign someone. I can't unilaterally go and terminate someone's contract. Uh, these are discussions we have internally, and you've got to, you know, play with the cards you get dealt. Sometimes we got dealt this card. We're trying to manage it as best as we can. Um, of course, it'd be great to bring in a top-class European midfielder or winger or striker, but we don't have those cards to shuffle in our deck. So. In saying that, and like I've said before, financially, we couldn't have gotten a top class player anyway because the, the budget didn't allow for that. So whether it was Chen as it is now or someone else, the less you pay, 
the less quality you tend to get. Not always, but generally. So, John, um, how do you fit all these pieces of the puzzle together? You have Riley, Troisi, Dorigo, Stefan. How do you fit them all together in the table? It's no problem. You have to wait till the last day, and then they are so disappointing. James Troisi is not playing, he's injured. So, it will be the whole season. Then there's that one injured and that one injured. It's my job at the puzzle of the team that can win and beat the, the opponent. So uh, I think we had, uh, um, with leaving Vince and get a younger one back, yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of potential. We're getting stronger. Yeah, and that's the meaning because you get suspension players, yeah, you get uh, injured players till the end of the season. And I think it's become a, a red race for the first six positions to play the playoffs. Yeah, there's not a, a big difference between the last uh, team, Newcastle, and, uh, and, and our team. Yeah, if you have a bad day or not focused very well or not switched on, then you can you can you can lose your games. And if not, if everybody is uh, is um, uh, highly motivated uh, and to do the to bring the, the best into the game, yeah, we can also win from from Manchester uh, Melbourne City. Frustrating to lose to Ray, probably for the season now. A frustration is not a good word. It's, you have to accept that the, the things are how they are going here in, in, in the A League. It's it's a stupid rule that we have to play uh, games when your one of your your your, your starter is not uh, in the squad. And now he's coming back, and you can say a lot about what happened, uh, but that's up to Bruce and, and, and the national team, coach, uh, uh, how it went, uh, and we're not we're not happy with it. That's that's. That's, uh, I think, uh, clear, but we have to manage it and probably he'll be away till the end of the season and maybe he's then ready for the Olympics. Bruce, was he, was he mismanaged? You know, there was some talk that um, <coughs> had a hot spot, probably shouldn't have played at least the last game. Yeah, look, I spoke to the Olerys doctor as recently as this morning, just around the processes that they go through. You know, When he left us, he didn't have any problem. Over there, they realised he had a problem. They didn't send him for any scans, which is generally what you would do with a... You know, you've got these assets, you've got to take care of them. You know, yes, they're human beings, but they're an asset. You know, he can help us win games. He can help them qualify for the Olympics, as he did. But it's interesting in this position, you know, International relations subjects at uni have probably been the most important for me to learn because it's very clear that everyone works in their own self-interest. So I couldn't get a good enough answer out of the doctor that they were essentially guessing, is it a stress injury? Did he twist his foot? Did he just get a kick on his foot? They were just guessing. And asking the player, do you feel okay to play? I've never met a player in my career when a coach asks if they're okay to play, that says no. So of course he's saying yes, but he's in pain, right? And for them not to go through the, what I would say, high performance process, get the scan, analyze it, don't, no guesswork and, and figure it out. We had discussions during the, during the, during the qualifiers. We said, bring him back if he's, when he's injured, just bring him back here so we can manage him properly. No, nah, it's okay, just got to kick on the foot, you know, out for the season. Bruce, did you, did you ask them like, why they didn't go through that process? Or? They felt that their answer was they felt confident enough that it wasn't a stress fracture injury. You know, he was, it was a niggle. That was the term that was used. If we scanned every player that has a niggle, we'd be getting scans 24 7, which is fair enough to a degree. But we're talking about a stress fracture in someone's foot, guys. You know, I used to play. I know what a niggle is. He's a young player. Right? He's 19. He's not a player that's 29. That's, you know, I've had a stress fracture in my foot. I've hurt my hammy before. I know you can self-diagnose once you've got experience. But when you're taking care of young kids, you've got to take care of them. I don't think that was the case. Were you then surprised? Because I think Gurchan said a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned that he had a foot injury over there. I think you played three other games. Two. Oh, oh, two after that. You must have been surprised to see him 
run out and then come back here and, and have this, this injury? Yeah, we watched, we watched them qualify. We were in the hotel, uh, watched them qualify. He came on, played the last 20 minutes or so. So we thought everything was fine. During that period where I think Gertrude even said in a press conference that Toure is injured and blah, blah, blah. Um, I got a message from Graham Arnold saying, don't worry about Toure, just got a kick on the foot, he's fine. Okay, so he's fine. Came back, got a call from the physio the day he landed. Toure's not presenting very well. I need to send him for a scan. His foot's inflamed, he's limping, etc., etc. And is there any update in terms of, is he going to require surgery? Do we know yet? I don't think so. I spoke to our club doctor yesterday and it's unlikely. What's the best case scenario for you then? I don't know, I'm not the doctor, but it's a stress factor in your foot. You've got to be very careful with him. Um, we'll manage him day by day. If he can get back in four weeks, fantastic. If it takes eight, it takes eight. No, <laughs> no, you can't bring him back in four weeks because in four weeks he can't do nothing. Yeah, he used to have the foot still, so he has a boot on his feet for at least four weeks. Then we get another picture and we will see if it's needed to be longer time, the, f the, the, the foot. And as long as the, the, he wears the foot, he can do nothing with his, uh, with his, with his uh, dead leg. So he can train a little bit on the, on the bike and, and do some power training. And then you have to bring him f uh, in condition, because otherwise he gets injured again. So, and I need uh, at least uh, two, three weeks. When he's six weeks off, I need three weeks at least to get him back in, in, in a good shape to, to, to perform in the A-League. Yeah, and then it's the end of the season. So it's, it's done with uh, Troy. It's not four weeks, he's broken. So, be, even if it's after four weeks, you get the, 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 uh, to hear from the doctor that he can uh, start training again, he can't play the next week. Stefan, will you play 10 or could you play 9? It's up to the trainer. <laughs> it's not up to him. So don't ask him. He will play there while I put him in. And I will explain him what I, want and what I expect from him. Do you have enough firepower leading into the second half of the season now? Like at the end of the transfer window, do you have enough people up It's always depending how things are going. Yeah, uh, this week uh, for the first time, uh, Christian played some some minutes in uh, in a friendly game. Uh, Boland make, uh, making his minutes. Uh, now it's Tracy uh, gone away. Also, Toure is not coming back to the end of the season, and that will go on and go on. Sometimes you have to be lucky that uh, that the injuries stay away, but sometimes you have some injuries, and that will depends on the positions. Yeah, we are not. Uh, I told already. We we manage every time in every game our chances, and we make also a lot of goals. But also, we uh, in defending we can make a, a lot of progress, and we are not so so. so uh, we not have a lot of uh, good defenders, so and defending is not only with the defenders. You do that with the whole team, yeah. And it's uh, quite a difference when you make uh, uh, pressing uh, with uh, with an attack line, which do that all already for the whole season or every chance changing. I can't remember that we played two times uh, a game in the same uh, constitution. So I have to change every week, and that's that's not you get the stability. I believe uh, Riley McGree also has a foot injury. How is he? Is he any chance to play tomorrow? Chance is 50-50. He trained this afternoon and we have see uh, after this morning and we will see where the direction is to uh, to this training uh, about tomorrow. And you mentioned James Trevisi. Is he also? He's out for two or three weeks. He has a muscle injury. So it's the same yesterday. He, f he trained. He felt comfortable. And after... Uh, uh, the last 10 minutes, he still mentioned uh, Navin that he felt some tightness in his, uh, his quadricep and then Navin checked him and he doesn't uh, trust it. So he sent him to the doctor and he got a scan. Yeah, and before the scan, Navin said when there's an inflaming of the muscle, then he can play with some medicin medicine. If not, then the muscle injury is two or three weeks out. Uh, it's, the scan shows it's a muscle injury, so he will be two or three weeks out. So fast it can go, yeah. in the afternoon training or not, in the morning training and the afternoon it can. Just, but, sorry, just back on tour, right? you, what's your opinion of how that was handled? Were you angry or disappointed? Or is it, it doesn't matter, it's, uh, it's living in the past, it's happened and I have to manage it now and he's not there so uh, he, I have to plan without him.